and George Lucas had graduated from USC and won the Warner Brothers Scholarship. Now, the Warner Brothers Scholarship was six months at the studio. Okay. George wanted to be a director. Mm -hmm. All he could do was sit in an office. He couldn't direct. Mm -hmm. He was writing, but there was no opportunity for to do anything. And he picked up the phone one day and he said, Howard, I'm here on the lot. And he said, I'd love to come down and visit. I said, come on down. Now, we were in the back lot of Finian's Rainbow, and I introduced him to Francis Coppola. Wow. And, um, you know, we said we went to school together and all of that. And at the end of the day, Francis said, every, every day on that picture, after we wrapped, I went to Francis's office because Francis was a guy that would change the call sheet at the last minute. Oh. Or he'd say, tomorrow morning for the first shot, I want a Titan crane. Well, we hadn't planned on a Titan crane. Or tomorrow morning, uh, you know, we had a huge cast, a huge dance cast. Hmm. And um, he'd say, uh, I, I want to start with them first thing in the morning, and I don't want to start at the church. I want to start out in the field. Yeah. So I'd have to immediately make you know, 30 yeah. phone calls and make all those adjustments. So uh, I took George to Francis's office that night, yeah. and we start talking. And, of course, um, George had nothing to do, but he talked about filmmaking, and um, Francis saw THX 1138. Mm -hmm. I don't have to tell you the rest of that story. And Francis told him to write something else, and that's when he did American Graffiti, which Francis produced or executive produced. Mm -hmm. Then when Francis was leaving Hollywood, he asked George and myself to go up to San Francisco and join him. Mm. I had gotten out of the training program, gotten my DGA card, just got married, and I didn't want to leave town. <laughs> but I stayed in touch with both George and Francis and how the opportunity to go into the editing room with Francis when he was doing The Godfather. Mm. No, Apocalypse Now and The Godfather. Wow. And always kept in, in tune with George. George, um, after THX, asked me to do American Graffiti with him. And I was, uh, I said yes, but I couldn't because I was stuck on another film. Mm. And then George asked me to do uh, Star Wars. And I said yes, but couldn't because I was stuck on another film, a, oh. Hitchcock, a Hitchcock film. Oh, no, wow. And then and wow. you don't say no to George. Well, you don't say no to Hitchcock either, I would <laughs> imagine. <laughs> but George came back again, and he said, okay, we have to do the sequel to American Graffiti. And I said, I'm now an executive in the Black Tower at Universal. Uh -huh. Yes, I will do it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now, let's talk about Hitchcock then. So you worked with Hitchcock. So tell me how it was to work with Hitchcock. It was the most wonderful experience I've ever had. Mm. He was a great guy. Uh, he mentored me. Mm. Uh, we would meet every morning alone in pre-production and during production, even during production. Uh, I'd meet him at his, well, let's say at per, during production, I'd meet him as his car drove to the stage. And uh, we'd get into his dressing room, and we'd have coffee on China for <laughs> wow. 30 minutes, and nobody, nobody would disturb us. First of all, there were only one or two people that would ever talk to him. Really? He was, you just didn't just talk to him. Just a big presence or what? Oh, yes. Yeah. He had stage presence. Yeah, yeah. And um, he, he would ask me, Howard, <laughs> you, do you remember, in, and he'd mention the film, why I did such and such. Mm -hmm. And what he was doing, and he did this in pre-production when we would go into the theater and see his films. And what he was doing is training me. Um, so on the days that he would go home early, I would take over as director. But it wow. wasn't me directing. It wasn't me directing. <laughs> I had been so brainwashed by him that I, that I that he was directing. It's just very fluid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Also, um, I would rehearse the cast that morning before he showed up at 9 o'clock. Huh. 
Wow. And I would call cut. I would call roll. I would call cut. And I would say, let's do it again, but faster. Wow. And after two or three days, I went to Peggy Robertson, who was his assistant for many, many years. I said, Peggy, you know what I'm doing? And she said, just keep doing it. He'll tell you. <laughs> He'll tell you. <laughs> if you're doing too wrong, much. Yeah. When it's wrong. Sort because, of that, just that yeah. big presence. But he was very creative. Yeah. He it was very thorough. Mm -hmm. The script had to be perfect. As an example, we were shooting um, up here in Sierra Madre at a cemetery. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, a dozen, two dozen extra standing around the open grave. And he turned to one of them and he said, who are we burying today? And that lady knew. Oh, wow. Because I had to tell those extras why they were there. Yeah. And, and a little bit about the story. Yeah. So he was just Another so, story. Yeah. Um, he said to me, and I've always followed through on this one. He said, do you remember in Vertigo? in the, I forget the name of the restaurant, in the restaurant, mm -hmm. where uh, Kim Novak walks towards camera. And I said, yes, I remember that, because I had seen the film recently. He had had me see that film. And he said, what color dress was she wearing? Oh, wow. And I said, green. Hmm. And he looked at me, and he said, emerald green. <laughs> <laughs> now he said, why did I ask you that? Now, oftentimes, even if I knew the yeah. answer, I say, tell me, Mr. Hitchcock. Yeah. Never said no. Yeah. Tell me, Mr. Hitchcock. I didn't say anything. And he said, extras never walk towards the camera. Huh. They walk away or they crisscross. Hmm. And that's what I've done the rest of my career. Huh. Wow. And so... So there were many things like that that he, he taught me. Yeah. Right or wrong. Yeah. So sounds like you were very mentored by him. Uh, might be a great transition to bring Darren in here as far as feeling a sense of mentorship from Howard. So uh, I don't want to presume that he was your Hitchcock, but uh, uh, tell me a, a little bit about uh, how Howard has influenced you. And I noticed uh, you were kind of sucking up to him by putting Raiders and uh, Return of the Jedi on your top ten. So uh, I'm assuming that was part of the, the mentorship or part of the influence, yes? Oh, absolutely. When I met Howard 18 years or so ago uh, and obviously knew the films that he had produced and the impact that they had on me, uh, you know, clearly after meeting Howard, they, they, would, they would always stay on my, my top ten. I didn't. I didn't know the day we met that it, he would become such a friend and such a mentor. Mm. Uh, but walking through his office, uh, as you <laughs> yeah. guys, as you guys just did, uh, is very much uh, a walk down movie history uh, in, in so many ways. And so, uh, Howard Howard's influence uh, has been uh, been been pretty amazing in my life. Just. Uh, I can remember the first movie I produced in, in 99, and, and I, I called him quite often. Uh, and whenever I was in a bind or didn't know, and I didn't know much, I, I probably still don't, but um, I would call him and say, hey, what, do you, what should I do here? What do you think? And so he has always picked up the phone and, and been gracious. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, uh, cut to uh, eight, 18 years you know, later we we are now working on our first project together, oh, uh, nice. and so um, and that's just been a, been a thrill for me to uh, to do this TV show with him and to uh, to be in the trenches with with a guy that has worked with so many incredible yeah. films and people yeah over the years. So, do you, can you think of uh, you know just as he was describing some of the. The, the lessons that he would take forward with him from Hitchcock, you know, even down to the extras. Um, what maybe is one of the lessons that you've kind of taken from his influence uh, that has been very informative of, of uh, steps that you're making right now? Just knowing how important that all of it works together. Yeah. 
And I think that's the that's the big thing there, yeah. is that uh, no, the individual departments are not individual departments. Yeah. They all have to work together. Yeah. Uh, very much like he talked about uh, some of the films that are on his top ten list of everything worked perfectly. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. that there seems to be, uh, you know, an epic like t- Ten Commandments, and yet the detail that you were getting from uh, Howard's getting from uh, from Hitchcock is still so ever present in the bigness of an epic like that, you know. And it sounds like that's sort of what he was has been leading you down the path is saying <clears throat> no matter how big this film may be in your mind how big it is it seems to be made in the details so. yeah absolutely in mm. the details yeah. yeah yeah let's do a little uh a little thing here uh while you're up darren of <clears throat> looking at his top 10 what would you say is the one that you look on the list and go yeah this is this is uh so howard based on me knowing him <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I, I think I think the Ten Commandments, uh, the yeah. the epic nature of the Ten Commandments, uh, knowing Howard as, as a man and as a man who who also uh, follows uh, Jesus and as a man who follows biblical principles, I can see why why that mm-hmm. was so impactful for him. Yeah. Um, and uh, so yeah. Yeah. All right. So Howard, you you're looking at Darren's list. Let's see. You, you've looked at his list. <laughs> Let's do the same for you. So, um, which film on Darren's list <laughs> do you look at and go, uh, that, that looks like it should be on his list? Indiana Jones. Aha. Uh-huh. So, tell me about Ready that. Because Darren, Darren is, uh, you know, me knowing Darren, uh, I didn't take him for like the action adventure kind of guy. So, how do you see him in that way that he, he is, uh, that Indiana Jones makes sense to you for Well, him? I know he, he, he likes spiritual films ah, okay. or films with a spiritual overtone and, and, and not biblical films. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always said um, if you make a straight on religious film, no one's going to go to it. Yeah. And it's like a child. You have to, uh, you can't, you can't give card liver oil to a child in a teaspoon. You have to mix it in his applesauce. Yeah, a little sugar. And that's sugar. what Darren is good at. Yeah, that's good. And which film uh, would you say on his top ten that you go, mm, I, don't, I don't know why this is on your remember top ten. Remember the Titans, maybe uh, October. Remember the Titans. Yeah, so justify yourself, Darren. Why is it on your top ten? So uh, remember the Titans, uh, in in my first career, I, I was actually a, a, a football coach. Oh yeah. Uh, and so, uh, remember the Titans was was really uh, pretty close to the beginning of my film career, and and I remember walking out of that theater in Culver City, and saying that's that's the kind of movie I'd like to make. Mm. Um, it, it it blended so many things that were important to me: yeah. racial reconciliation. Um, and obviously, just coming off of you know seven years of, of coaching football at a, at a high school, uh, it just it, it had a tremendous impact on me, mm. and and thinking about the kind of films I'd love to be a part of. Yeah, so it really intersected your story. Yeah, uh, in yeah, that yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is there a film on your list, Howard, that kind of you would say this intersects my personal story? Not not because I was there, or or because you know. Uh, I knew this director, or, or so forth, but but the story itself that it sort of intersects. Uh, Friendly your... persuasion. Yeah. So, uh, let me have you shift over just uh, and tell me why. Well, look, you know, I always say story, 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 as does Darren, and there's a great story in Friendly Persuasion. It was so real, mm-hmm. and it was a great story, and it brought a little bit of history, our Civil War, but it wasn't a Civil mm-hmm. War movie. It touched on it. Yeah. It it talked about past pacifist like the Gary Cooper yeah. uh, character maybe that's a little of me yeah you know I, I, I would have difficulty going into battle in mm-hmm. war mm-hmm. and taking somebody's life yeah so that part of him uh, having difficulty taking up arms is is you resonate with but that. family yeah um i was noticing that the magnificent seven is is another movie about uh, a helpless 